Now for tying the pheasant tail you'll need a good strong hook and this is a size 12. Now you simply start at the eye of your hook in much the same as you do with thread. I'm using the wire as my thread I'm winding down covering the hook. Just take your time. Now a tip that you should I was sure I said was that the bobbin holder I'm using is a ceramic bobbin holder. I would you've got to use a ceramic bobbin holder. Especially when you're using wire to tie the fly. As the metal one with the tube will just cause it to like scrape and it'll break the wire and you don't want that. So you want a nice smooth ceramic. Uh, the one I prefer is the TMCO and it's the floss one where there's the black. So it's got the black ceramic all the way through. It's ideal. Um, ideal for tying these type of flies. Now once you've laid, put down a layer of a wire. Now normally this part here would be your waist piece and you would cut that away, you leave this on, that's going to be your rib. Now, to pull the fibres from the, the pheasant tail, what you do is, 90 degrees, bring a good, now I like, I don't work with three fibres, I put a few on, now there must be, a, they got some 10 there, now you, all you do is bring the, these fibres 90 degrees from the, the pheasant tail, the stem of the pheasant tail, and they naturally line up, See, very easily. And once you do that, you just tear it off. Now, the tail length, don't have it too long. What will happen is, because pheasant tail fibre is not as strong as fibre in the world, work with a shorter length. Now, basically, you're looking for two thirds of body it would be the, the length you're looking for to sit over the back. Now, the best tip I can do to say about actually catching these in is to really bring your bobbin close, maybe about an inch and a half from the hook. It gets round the shank quicker. Now simply onto the top and over a couple of times. Now I've just caught one of the fibres there. Just pull it up, you haven't tightened up at this point. There's two turns there and there's your tail. Now keep it Nice, keep it tight, lift these fibres up and bring your wire in front and quickly take it up two thirds of the body or to the beginning of your thorax which is going to be there. Now you have wire to wire there, wire to wire will slip so I recommend you use a varnish or in this case I'm using a super glue and I just apply a thin layer super glue top and bottom don't put too much on that soaks into the the wire itself and onto the hook and it stops it slipping now what I'm going to do here I'm going to bring the pheasant tail the opposite way I wind the wire I wind the wire away from myself but I'm bringing the pheasant tail fibers towards me it's the weakest fiber you'll see what I mean later on why I do this just simply wind up forming the body of your pheasant tail to get to this point here bring it up bring your wire across over the back a couple of turns now with the super glue holding the pheasant tail as well as the weight of the bobbin or wire this will hold then you bring your waist piece of wire up as your rib the normal way or winding away from yourself this will allow, to th allow you to see the rib and as well it will catch more of the fibre in it makes it much stronger the weakest fibre there is the pheasant tail so and the strongest is your, your wire rib it's best to wind that the way that it's going to stay the tightest and that's the way it stays tight just bring it across your wire and bring your wire over the back then concentrate keeping pheasant tail fibres on the top and touching turns wind right down towards the eye to get to this point here and then all you have to do is form your thorax using the wire just trim some of this weight building it up don't go overboard don't go crazy so your wire back up 
and then back down. Now this is a slight difference to the way I like to tie off at the back. As you can see now I have the, the wire at the back of the thorax here. I bring pheasant tail fibre over the top and with my nail I rub the pheasant tail fibres. And what that does, it brings them all in line, straightens them up, takes any twists, turns or whatever out, just by rubbing your nail on like that. And then I bring a single turn, a wire over the top, keeping the wire tight, get a hold of your whip finishing tool, and then you do one, two, three turns, heading back up, and then finish. Quick finish. Very easy to do. Best tip I can say there is to keep going, don't stop. If you hesitate or stop, sometimes this causes the wire to stick. And when you go to start again, it breaks. So just take your time. Then all I do then is come in with the scissors at the back. Now I'm going to leave maybe about a millimetre of pheasant tail fibres. This, in my eyes, looks like small wing buds. And makes the fly just a wee bit more interesting especially in my eyes to the fish and it's a me small midge pattern but it works a treat, it's very easy, you can fill your box with these in no time and they'll keep catching your fish right through the whole season now all I do to protect this area up here is come in and put some varnish in the thorax this will soak into the wire and make it last a wee bit longer. Now you will wear these flies out, you'll definitely wear them out, so you need plenty. Now the other thing you could actually do is you can dub. As in the way back down, you can you can do this on olive one, a dark olive. You can actually dub on some hairs here and still finish off at the back and it looks very good. And that's the dark olive. Great flies to have in your box. And that's your pheasant tail nymph.